Welcome to my channel. This is, my name is Barbara. Um, this is Those Yarn Rabbits. This is your first time coming here. Um, thank you for clicking on me and coming and finding out what I have to offer here. If this is your second time here, since this is episode number two, just two, um, thank you for returning. Um, I appreciate the, the support and the kind comments that everybody gave me from my first pilot episode from three weeks ago. Um, thank you very much. If you like what you see, go ahead and uh, click down, down below the video. Click that you like the video. Um, consider sharing it with somebody that you think might benefit or be of interest, um, interested in anything that I have to offer. And also subscribe. Um, I hope to be on this channel to, to grow um, with it and maybe to offer some patterns and some other types of things that I can work on down the road as I get a little better at what I'm doing here. Um, today is uh, December 28th, 2023. Like I said, I, my first video was from a couple of weeks ago. My goal was to um, put out a video at least every other week. Last week was Christmas week, or the week before Christmas, so I kind of got a little caught up in uh, the busyness of preparing and getting ready for the family um, that I didn't get a video out. So, like I said, today is December 28th, 2023, according to the Catholic calendar. This is the Feast of the Holy Innocents, which is the day that the Catholic Church commemorates the martyrdom of all the children under the age of, all the males under the age of two that Herod had condemned to death as he was trying to eliminate the Christ um, after his uh, birth um, in Nazareth. Um, we do offer a lot of prayers for these holy innocents as well as other holy innocents who die through the, the sin of abortion in our country and we offer up prayers for them and look forward to joining them in heaven one day um, to start off with um, like i said this is uh, those yarn rabbits um, i started this back in 2014 with my very first french angora rabbit um, with the idea of learning how to spin, learning how to get um, more connected to the types of fibers that uh, we make our clothing with or have made our clothing with in the past. I did not, I, I just had a growing distaste of acrylic yarn, not that there's anything wrong with acrylic yarn. I use acrylic yarn all the time with um, my children and my grandchildren in particular for toys and blankets and sturdy types of things. But I, I had an, a desire to learn more about natural fibers and where our fibers came from. And I live in the city, so my ability to have animals was limited and to rabbits as far as fiber animals go. Um, the sweater I'm wearing today is one of the first sweaters that I made with regards to incorporating my Angora spun fiber. I put them, this is from the white fiber on the collar and on the, the trim here. On the arms is from my very first white um, ruby-eyed doe called, oh my gosh, what was her name? Lily, Lily, Lily White. Yeah. Um, she was a beautiful rabbit, um, lived quite a number of years, probably seven or eight years. She really had a good life. But this was one of my first um, times putting um, the, the, the Angora fiber into yarn and then actually knitting something up and incorporating it into a, a sweater. This sweater is from, let's see, where's my sweater? This, le this sweater pattern is from the book called French Girl Knits. Um, it's one of, like I said, one of the very first sweaters I knit with regards to um, using my Angora. This is called the Viola. Um, it's a short sleeve cardigan. And this is uh, what the original one kind of looked like and what I was emulating. So it is a short cardigan. It does have three small buttons at the t at the top here, and it's got little buttons on the sleeves as well. It's kind of a short, I don't know if you can see, it kind of goes just about the hips and kind of opens up. It's just a nice light little sweater to put on. The, the purple yarn is a mohair yarn that I just had in my stash, so I don't have any clue where I came from. I, my stash goes back years and years and years and years, as it is with a lot of different um, people who craft and knit um, that we have stuff that we just have forever. Um, so I don't have any links um, as far as where to get that. Um, so it's a nice homegrown sweater. I wear it periodically. I just It's just a nice rich kind of sweater. So this is kind of out of my archives. Um, I'll be, I'm planning to share a lot of the different sweaters that I've made over the years. I've gotten really much better at knitting sweaters and um, I'm going to continue making those mainly for myself. But if others want, maybe I'll make them for others if they're good. One of the things that I was busy with last um, couple of weeks of Advent, moving up to Christmas, and one of the reasons I wasn't 
um, in, a, in a place to film last week and put a video out was that I was trying to finish a, a big Christmas gift. Um, as I said in my last pilot video, my youngest, our youngest daughter um, started university studies um, at Indiana University um, this past year. And I decided that she needed, of course, like being a good mom that I am, or want to be, um, I decided I was going to make her a blanket for her dorm room. Um, now this, apparently this was the year for her to get a lot of blankets because lots of people gave her different blankets. Um, but this is a homemade blanket that I, get, I made for her and the pattern was called, see, it was called Gleefully Crocheting. It was one piece crochet blanket. I found this on, found this on Etsy. The patterns are copyrighted by Glee Workman and it's just a little printout PDF that I got. And that's kind of a really tiny little picture of what this pic, of what this pattern is supposed to look like but let's see if I can I don't know if I can hold this up to show you but the center it's got all these little bobbles or as the crochet people or as a crochet likes to call it uh, they call it the popcorn stitch in knitting it's bobbles and in crochet it's popcorn so the very top you've got Indiana and the very bottom it says University and then down the sides it says Hoosiers so this is nice, decent size. I think it's about a twin. I didn't really block it because it just, I was trying to finish it up for Christmas, so I didn't get a chance to block it out any more than the size that it is right now. Ideally, the size should be, where did I see this? 80 by 52. 51 by 72, oof, that was off. 51 inches by 72 inches. Um, so the yarn I used was just basic, asked for basic red heart. I ended up buying um, Big Twist because they had a big sale, a bunch of, couple sales on that over during Advent. Started this up just before Thanksgiving. So it took me a little, about a month to make this. Um, I, I try to write down how long it takes me to make stuff. This is a decent size, um, a decent type of acrylic yarn. It does. Um, it's kind of soft. It is soft for acrylic. Um, it does. It is going to wear well, I hope, um, and it's certainly going to wash up well for her. Another project that I was trying to finish up was a, um, a weaving project. Um, I was going to talk about it last video. I actually was had it on the back of the chair that I was sitting on, and then I completely forgot. Even though I had it on my notes to show you, I didn't show you. Now this isn't really exactly a finished project, other than it is finished weaving. I used my hand spun yarn and I made two panels. Let's see if I can get go down here. I made two panels with um, my home hand spun Romney wool. So it's a nice dark gray wool. And I just did a basic stitch with, um, oh, this isn't the one I wanted to show you. This is the one I wanted to show you. <laughs> this one it has the finished trim fringe on it. I did, um, I have a, a tool that spins and spins the, 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 uh, the, the uh, extra fibers down there into what looks like little tiny braids. What my plan is to do with these two patterns, and they're both, I should have measured it, so it, it goes pretty long. And I want to say it's about four and a half, five feet wide, and maybe two and a half feet Two and a half feet wide and five feet long. Sorry, um, I got the idea from the book that I had in my um, in my bookcase over there called "Simple Wo Woven Garments" by Sarah Goldenberg and Jane Patrick. And it's just a simple pattern that I wanted to make. I was making something called the V shawl, which this is a much smaller version than the one that I was making. And what I what the plan is is that I'm going to um, Let's see if I can show you here. What you do is you're going to put the two corners together and it's going to make a V. That's the very back and you're going to kind of like put the two 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 rectangles and you're going to kind of put it so that you've kind of got this little angle. I can't even do it right. So I kind of got like a V and then it's going to go throw it over my shoulders. It's just a nice um, like a a fall spring kind of mostly fall because it's fall colors. Um, kind of just a, something to throw over your shoulders. Not quite a shawl, not quite a sweater, not quite a jacket, but a poncho just to
to keep you kind of nice and, and warm. And I think, no, I had the, the, the reason I wanted to make this is because I've had two um, acrylic red ones and acrylic and wool red ones that I've worn for years and years and years. And they've just kind of started to not have, they're, they're not wearing real well because I've had them for so long. We're talking probably 15, 20 years. So this was my attempt to use my own hand spun yarn to make a garment. So I'm hoping by the next, well, by the next video, I will have that together. So I'll be able to show you um, what that looks like. And um, this sweater is really hot. So take that sweater off for a while. All right, works in progress. Uh, let's see. I was working on, been working, since I got the blanket done, I've been working on my Tesoro sweater, which is a sweater, I think it's called Tesoro, is that right? <laughs> yeah, Tesoro sweater, which is a sweetheart neckline, three-quarter length sleeve, um, very trim kind of sweater um, in the color Paprika. I got the sweater pattern off of the Lime Brand website, as well as the pattern, as well as the, the yarn. The yarn is the yarn is 100% superwash merino wool. Like I said, it's in this colorway paprika, number one three three one. Uh, last time I only had about eight inches. It's a bottom up um, sweater. I only had about eight inches of the bottom done. And since then, I have gotten the entire front done with the sweetheart neckline. Let me get that up. And I started on one of the sleeves. And the sleeves are um, a one by one rib, just like the bottom is a one by one rib. This is such a nice, soft, squishy yarn. It fits so wonderfully. Um, the one thing that I had not well it doesn't look like the front stays really well i was a little worried about this rolling this this front rolling down just because of the way the pattern was but a, what you do end up doing is adding a three needle uh i-cord uh, bind off all around the neck and the the shoulders and that kind of gives it a little more stability it looks like it's rolling right now but when i put it on because of you know the body shape it does kind of stand up a little more and you can see the little indentation in the middle here, which is really pretty. But the sleeves, I got, yeah, it's almost down to my elbow. So I hope to have that done fairly soon within the next week or so. It's, it's nice nighttime knitting right now or TV knitting because it's right now it's just one by one ribs. And I done a couple of decreases um, as you go down the arm and I'm almost to the point where the decreases are done and then I'll just finish off um, until about mid arm. So that's a, I'm looking forward to, to having that sweater um, to wear mainly for spring um, towards Valentine's Day kind of stuff. Um, I think it'd be a really nice color. Spinning that I've done recently, um, I was working on my Russian I don't think I have any with I was working on my Russian supported spindles and I was working with this beautiful corn beautiful yarn it's called Kramer Sterling uh, superwash merino silk nylon and silver poly so it's got kind of a little glitter to it and I don't know if you can the camera can pick that up or not this is the first skein that I've made I'm, I'm trying to get as close to lace weight as I can for this yarn, this is the first skein I've made. This is 175 yards, so it's real tiny. And um, I almost have my um, my drop spindle filled up. Uh, looks like I can still put a little bit more on here. It's spinning up very, very beautifully. This is a beautiful spindle that I got off of Etsy. Um, it's got a little brass tip to it, and I've been using my singing bowl um, again to spin that and spin that yarn up. My goal with this yarn is to, again, make my knitted lace, my Crown Prince square shawl, which is featured on the cover here of Knitted Lace of Estonia by Nancy Bush. Um, I took about two years to make this from some commercially spun up lace weight yarn and loved the, this shawl. It was a beautiful shawl. I wore it many, many times. My husband made this great big giant um, Oh, what do you want to call it? Like a frame with uh, a couple hundred nails on it, so that I could actually when I to block it out because it it blocks uh, 52 by 52 inches. It's it's huge, 
but I lost it this last fall. Um, I um, was kind of unhappy that I still have yet to get any response that anybody ever found it. So if anybody's watching this and they happen to have picked up a shawl in the parking lot or in the grounds of the Apple, Johnny Appleseed Fairgrounds in Fort Wayne, Indiana back in September for the Johnny Appleseed Festival, if you pick that up and you've been enjoying your shawl, you know, if you need it, great, but, you know, I'd really like it back. It took me two years to make. Um, so if, you know, you're able to bring it back to me, give me a contact, give me an email. I'll leave my contact information down below. Um, and we'll give you a little prize or some, some kind of something to, to show my gratitude that you've returned this to me in one piece. I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on, and I talked a little bit about this when I was showing my spindles and my ring distaff, was that I wanted to challenge myself and learn how to spin flax. Um, if you don't know where linen comes from, linen is a, um, a natural fiber that um, grows um, from flax, the flax plants, a beautiful fiber. Um, and I have been trying to figure out, oh, wait a minute, got a mess here. Um, been trying to figure out how to dress my distaff, which doesn't look real happy right now. This is a ring distaff that you wear on your finger and you use it to hold the fiber as you draft it out to put onto your spindle. Now this is a spindle. I haven't shown this spindle. It's basically just a stick with a little spoon or a little piece of pottery stone on the bottom. And I've been trying to spin this as thin as I possibly can. But I'm telling you, it is, um, flax is a challenge. And I, I need to do some more study. I need to do some more, uh, watch some more videos and maybe dress my distaff a little, little differently. It's kind of, it won't stay up and I'm trying to figure out how to hold it at the same time while trying to draft it with the same hand and then spin with this hand. Um, I, I haven't just, I just haven't quite figured it out. I thought it was going to be easier than it was. And I'm thinking maybe I might have to take this off off the distaff and maybe start working with the distaff with some wool that I know I can spin up easily um, in order to give me kind of a little more confidence because flax doesn't have the stretch um, and elasticity that wool has that I've, that I've grown accustomed to. Um, wool is very elastic um, depending upon what kind of breed that you're going to be to be spinning up and there's a lot of give depending upon how long your, your staples are. Um, with regards to the fiber staples. Um, flax has very, very long staples because it, it grows a couple of feet, um, but there's no give to it and um, it can be real brittle. Um, so I'm trying to figure out when do I water my fingers and when do I draft and you know how do I spin and it's just, it's kind of like learning to spin all over again because it's such a different fiber from the wool and the angora that I've used. The angora is real slippery, silk's real slippery. Um, it just, it's just very, very different to spin. So that's one of the things that um, a challenge for me this next year is to figure out how to spin that so I can learn to make something with it. Um, I'd like to, you know, I love the, the idea of wearing natural cloth, natural linens on our bodies. Of course, I'm not wearing one today. It's a kind of polyester shirt, but the idea of wearing um, linen cloth um, and cotton cloth um, goes back as far back as humans have been making cloth. So I hope to be able to share that a little bit more as I work through that process of what I'm working on. Another whip or work in progress is um, I talk a little bit about some of the cross stitch that I've done. I talked about that in my last video, but I didn't really show you a whole lot. There's a few pieces over my shoulder here on the wall. Um, some I've made, some I just purchased. I have a tendency to um, kind of... <laughs> kind of rescue things that I find when I do my secondhand shopping and go to antique stores and some of these things are from antique stores some of them are from my friend Betty from her shop when she closed her shop and sold some things I couldn't resist um, leaving those to other people and so I bought some of those um, but I do have several cross stitch projects in work all the time um, that I've had for years and years I used to cross stitch a lot when I was younger um, and kind of had gotten back into it just because it's it's something fun and portable to take with you um, one of the, the finished objects for cross stitch that I wanted to show you was my little happy camper um, ornament that I made um, this year, this summer. Um, 
a few months ago, my husband and I um, finally bit the bullet and bought a, a camper, a, a pull that we pull behind our, our, our vehicle. Um, we have a grand design, oh geez, I'm gonna mess this up. 17 MKE, I think is what it's called. It's a 20 foot um, camper with 17 feet of living space. And so I made this cute little happy camper, little ornament to stick, to hang in, in the camper. Um, doesn't look like our camper at all. This looks like a very, um, an older style camper, but I just thought it was just really cute. Something I was so excited about being able to, um, have this camper and do some weekend camping with my husband that, um, we couldn't wait. So that leads me to another whip or work in project. And this is a, um, cross stitch project that I, I started, again, for the camper. Originally, I was thinking I was gonna make it something that I could put on the wall, but I think, as I think about it and work with it, I think I might just make this into a pillow. That way, you know, we can have it out if we want, and we can put it away if we want. But this is called the Hampy Camper. It's designed by Diane Arthurs. Um, I got this on Amazon. Amazon, I got this. Um, so it's just a cute little um, retro looking camper. It says home is where we park it. Um, just very colorful, very, very springy. I hope to have this done by the time we start camping again um, in the in the spring. You know, it's it's December now, so doing camping out right right now in northern Indiana is <laughs> kind of cold. Um, we've had an unusually warm December, um, especially for Christmas. It was almost 60 degrees for Christmas this year, which was Kind of unheard of for us. Um, we don't usually have a lot of snow this time of year, but um, to go camping right now, uh, not we don't want to do that right now. Um, so right now, so far, this is what I have done so far. So I've got the main body of the retro camper. I've got the door and one of the windows. And uh, I haven't worked on this in a while. I started this uh, after we got the camper party back in September. And then uh, by October, I kind of started switching towards uh, Christmas stuff. So this is one of the things, like I said, I'm going to um, work on. And I'm trying to think, see how big this is supposed to be. It doesn't say. It should say somewhere. Uh, approximate design size is going to be 6 and 3 quarters by 8 and 3 quarters. So that'll be a decent sized pillow. Um, I don't think it'll be too bad. But I'll probably end up putting some embroidery work in there as far as like our initials in the year, you know, that we got the camper. Another work in progress that I've been working on is another cross stitch design. This one is called Stitching ABCs. And I started this, oof, oh, I don't remember when I started. I didn't write it down when I started it. I try to write down on my patterns when I write, when I do things so I know how many weeks or months it took to make something. Um, this is by Design Works, and I'm trying to remember where I found this. If I found this at Hobby Lobby, or I'm not sure where I found this from, but this is what it is. And it's basically the ABCs of all the different things I like to do, most of the things I like to do. Um, so it starts with the ABCs, it starts with uh, applique, buttons, calico, darning, embroidery, French knots, and so on and so forth. Um, Here's what I have done so far. Like I said, I have been working on this for quite some time. Let's see if I can get back a little further. That's about what I have. I've got the A's all the way down to the R's. I'm working on ruffles right now. Um, but I just love the little kitty in the middle of it. it. Reminds me so much of our little, our cat Rose. Oops, let's see if I can get her. There, we, there she is. Um, and we had a calico named Rose um, for many, many years. Uh, about 15, 15 years she died last year. Last year, just after Christmas. Um, this, the plan is to frame it in black frames like I have my other frames up here um, and put it with all the other things. Um, I just, I, I like that kind of decor. I know not everybody, that's not everybody's jam when it comes to decorating, um, but I really, I like it. Uh, it gives me something to work on. It's like I said, a cross stitch is, is something that you can easily take um, different places. It doesn't take a lot of thought. Um, you do have to count and you do have to pay attention, but it is something that you can work on without a lot of thinking. Um, sometimes knitting is that way. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's a little more um, you have to really think depending upon what the pattern is. 
so that's pretty much all I've been working on, what I've had working on now. New Year plans. New Year's Eve is coming up uh, very, very this coming weekend. So as I think about the different things that I want to work on this weekend, I have a couple of specific plans that I want to work on. Last episode, I showed you a um, the snowfall sweater scarf pattern that I had made. I have since figured out how to style that two different ways. Um, it is kind of a little slippery. It does kind of come off my shoulders a lot. It gets very, very warm very, very quickly. But it's a beautiful pattern, and I really like it. Um, but I did find another pattern. That was a knit pattern. And this is a crochet pattern that I found. Same kind of thing. A crochet sweater scarf is what this one is called. And it's very similar to the way that the snowfall shawl scarf looks as well, too. So it's a Basically, it's a large scarf with sleeves that you can wrap around many, many times, or at least one or two times. This is, um, I got this at the LionBrand.com, and I'm going to be making it in, is it this color? Yeah, I'm going to be making it in this gray color, which I don't remember what the name of it is. The band's over there, and I don't remember. I made it in one of the recommended colors on here but it's a nice neutral gray I think um, in contrast to that linen color that I had before this gray is going to be really nice it's nice and soft and squishy it's a wool a wool um, fiber as well I don't remember if it's superwash or not don't remember another plan that I have for the new year is um, something also from Lion Brand I did kind of a nice little shopping um, at Lion Brand a couple months ago bought a couple patterns this is called the modern knot bag I've also seen it referred to as the Japanese knot bag. It's just a nice little project bag that I'm going to make. Um, it looks, it's going to look like that is kind of what you got one, one arm that's going to be a little longer than the other. And you loop the longer one through the sh shorter one and then put it over your arm. So this is a great little project bag for like socks or, you know, small things that you can put in there, small little projects. Um, and I think it's going to be, I, I just love project bags. And if I've got a nice pattern like that, um, I did try to do a felted version of this one time. I did, I knit the pattern and felted it and it turned out horrible, but I still made it. I still enjoyed it anyways. I'm not sure what I did with that bag, but I'm going to be using, um, from Lion Brim, 27 cotton, 27, sorry, 24 seven cotton. Um, this is in the color hay bale. I just think this is going to be a nice kind of a greeny browny kind of color, which I think is going to be really kind of pretty. Um, you won't be able to see the dirt so much with a darker color like that. Um, other plans I have, uh -huh. two other plans I have are cross stitch plans. Um, and the one I'm going to make is going to be kind of a companion piece to another cross stitch piece that I kind of rescued from, I believe it was Daddy. This is called the spinning wheel sampler and it says, get thy spindle and thy distaff ready and God will send the flax. Well, you know, I'm trying to learn how to spin, spin flax with my distaff. So this is kind of what it looks like. That's what the pattern, picture of the pattern looks like. And I'm going to make it and put it in a frame similar to this piece that I have on my wall. Um, I just fell in love with this when I saw this. This on the back, it says from Uncle Bruce's Christmas 1933, Shipshawana, Indiana, purchased March 22nd, 2013. Um, I bought this this last year, so I've had it only a few months in my, my, my stash, but I just think it's I just like the old worldness of it. It's not a complete cross stitch. You know, you've got the nice, beautiful linen um, and then with all the different colors. And I found this beautiful linen fabric that is, let's see, I bought this at Joann's, Carolina Linen. It's 28 count, so it's gonna be very similar, similar to the colors of that. I think it's, it's close enough for me, um, kind of have an old world feel. Um, but that's a project that I will start later this spring and uh, have some fun making that. The other project that I'm going to start, or have started, but I didn't get very far in that, is a cross-stitch sampler that I bought at one of the embroidery shops on the south, south, southwest side of town. I guess it's the south side of town, so the area called Waynedale. Um, since I'm into rabbits. 
I bought a whole bunch of patterns probably two years ago. This is Rebecca, and it's just by Kathy, Kathy Barrick. Beautiful pat, beautiful cross stitch pattern. Um, and this is 28 count. Oh, I asked for 40 count maritime linen. I think I got 28 count. And that's all I have so far. I'm still counting it as a start for the um, for the new year, um, but it's not going to be very big. I mean, that's as big as my my fabric is, so it's not going to be a huge rabbit. But again, my idea was to make a couple of little throw pillows for my uh, for my couch. But who knows? My husband hates pillows, so it may just end up being on the wall as well too. The only other thing I thought about for my New Year resolution, two other things, is I have this book called Poems of Color. This is by Wendy Wendy Keel. I've had this in my stash for quite a long time. Um, there are some episodes on YouTube about exactly what the Bohost tradition um, in Sweden with regards to these beautiful sweaters that they make. This started as a cottage industry for these pat for these similar to Fair Isle and that you're doing a, um, a series of colors across across the, 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 the yoke of your, your sweater. But the yarn is a, a, a Angora wool blend. And that's one of the things that I'd like to finally start making one of these sweaters with some Angora um, and wool blends that I have um, in my own stash. I don't have a whole lot of Angora left. I only have one Angora rabbit left. Um, so I don't get a whole lot of Angora. The other thing that I might be diving into this year as a year year prolonged project is pulling some projects out of here. Um, Knitted Almanac, Knitter's Almanac by Elizabeth Zimmerman. Anybody who knows anything about, about knitting knows that Elizabeth Zimmerman has written some really good um, pattern books and really good um, patterns. This is an interesting book in that it, I mean, it's all it's all mostly just type. There's not a whole lot of pictures, so it's looking at the patterns in an old, older style way. And she wrote a pattern, basically, a pattern or two, depending upon the size, for each month of the year. So you can make a different pattern each year, or each month of the year, and have a whole bunch, have a dozen projects by the end of the year. I thought, what a great thing to do for, you know, starting this year. And of course, the very first project in January is a full Aran sweater. Well, an Aran sweater is gonna take more than a month for me. Um, my, my style of knitting, um, I, I take a little bit longer. It'd probably take me like several months, if not half a year, to, to knit a full Aran sweater. So I'm going to be picking and choosing. I might make three or four of these out of the year. Um, we'll see. I mean, I love, I love the pie shawl in the middle. I'm always drawn to the shawls, and of course, I'm drawn to all the baby things that are on here. Um, I have a new grandson um, that came this year. Um, she was only about four, five, six weeks old, and um, well, about five weeks old. November 13th he was born, so a little over a month old. Um, so I'll probably be making some sweaters for his little, his little, his little body, his little life. Um, didn't quite get one for his first Christmas, so I'll focus on next Christmas. Um, don't know how long we've been going on, probably been yammering a little bit too much, but again, I'm very glad that you joined me. Um, I, I do hope that I improve with the way I put these videos together and the way I edit them and the way I put them out. I will be adding different, as I learn to edit, I'll be adding, you know, different music and, you know, words and stuff like pictures and things like that. I'll, I'll learn how to do that. If you have any suggestions for me as far as what kind of programs I could be using that maybe has been beneficial to you, um, shoot me an email down below or shoot me an email. I'll, again, I'll leave my contact information down below. Again, if you like what I'm saying, you like what I'm doing, um, give me a like. Give me a thumbs up like for my video. Share the video with anybody you think might be interested. And consider subscribing and being part of the Those Yarn Rabbits um, family. Um, thank you very much. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. Um, we had six of our nine children and one of our grandchildren home, so and an extra grand dog um, as well. So we had, uh, it was a very nice, very nice Christmas, very loud as usual because we're a loud family. I um, hope you have a very safe and happy New Year's Eve. Um, this, I don't believe I'll be putting any more videos out this week since it's already the 28th. Um, so I, I hope to have another video out within the next week or two. Um, I will, as I learn to do these videos, I'll have, begin to have a more structured um, production date um, for putting these videos out. So again, thank you. 
Have a great New Year's Eve. Thanks.